what does that mean for you guys to know that you've already done that? Something that's only been done once before in franchise history. It's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So thanks for letting us know that, Doug. And I think we won five in a row for the first time this year too. So that was nice. I actually didn't bring that up, didn't want to jinx us because last time we were here we lost. Um, but, yeah, no, that's good. Like I said, we had big goals coming in and, and it's, I think we continued to grow and, we sh um, and, and build in our chemistry. So that's what excites me. Obviously winning is a part of it, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, we're playing, we're playing well at the moment. My follow-up is Sab. You said yesterday how Mikhail was the top fan for you guys, but now obviously Jason Stakis has been here two games in a row that you've won big. Is he going to challenge for that top spot? Yeah. I hope he keeps coming to the games. Uh, we were super excited to see him and his family. We're all super fans, so we're super happy that we were able to go up and take a picture with him and his family. Um, but hopefully we can continue to get him out to games. I wanted to go over too. Well, sure. you were too small. You missed your opportunity. Yeah. Damn, I thought like a fangirl, but yeah. <laughs> so were we. I didn't care. Next game. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Sandy, we've talked a lot about the bench, and so they got an opportunity, and Marine and KT, they both played over 15 minutes, and they both had positive plus minus. You know, how do you feel like the two of them helped you guys and allowed you to play the defense that you did? Yeah, no, I... I both of them did their job and I was uh, complimentary of, of Marine, you know, just coming in and being aggressive and and just defensively too, just executing and being getting steals. It was great. It was fun. And that's how we wanted to play. Um, so, and KT, we know what she's going to bring every single night. So, and that's important for us. You know, we got a big schedule, but it's big picture too because we need, we know our bench is important for us and it's great to have Steph back as well and we'll continue to build up her minutes as well. And, and Stewie, I would like to continue on uh, Jason Sudeikis. I mean, I saw you guys, you took, you took a photo, then the whole team took a photo. What did he have to say to you when you first greeted him? He said, believe. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> oh, he did not. Uh, I cracked myself up. <laughs> oh. oh, he did not. Believe. She's very funny, isn't um, We've got that in our locker room, though, haven't we? That's, that's yeah, we do. Fun. Yeah. Oh, I know. So that's what he said. <laughs> um, no, I think he just really enjoyed being able to, to be at the game, um, both this game and the one before, and especially for his kids probably to just have um, many more role models to continue to look up to. But uh, we just said that we want him to, to continue to come back, and obviously he's always welcome, so it's, it's nice to, to see him there and um, so down to earth. Um, Sandy, I actually wanted to ask you how you felt Steph was feeling. Did you talk to her after the game a little bit? Yeah, I really, I mean, I didn't talk to her too much after the game, but uh, I think she was really nervous today. <laughs> um, even when I said you were going in, ooh, um, <laughs> just go out and, you know, do what you do. And, you know, I thought she, you know, I don't look at the plus minus. I look about how she's going to help us as we move forward and we know conditioning would be the biggest thing for her. Um, but... Look, uh, I look forward to getting, you know, obviously more on Sunday and, and keep building her up. But the most important thing, she feels good. And then it's just the conditioning, which is going to come. Sandy, I know you just said that you don't look at the plus minus, but John Call Jones was a plus 29 tonight. I do in, look at that. <laughs> in just 29 minutes, it seemed like every time the Sky were making a run, you were able to bring JJ back in and she kind of stopped it, defensively especially, as a deterrent at the rim, just kind of some of her help. What did you see from JJ tonight as she kind of continues this this streak? Yeah, just really happy for JJ, really, to be quite honest. She's just, you know, um, just playing so well at both ends of the floor for us, and that's why we are where we are at the moment. I think her and Stewie has this great combination. Um, they anticipate, they read off each other well. Um, you know, we're establishing her down low on offense and, you know, she's going to work. So I like the, the aggressiveness and the intent for her to just rebound and be a power defensively with changing shots and blocking shots, but then offensively creating space for us down on the block. Thank you. And Brianna, I wanted to ask you about Sabrina because she hit five more threes tonight. Uh, it is up to 99 now on the season, which is already good for fourth all time in a WNBA season. Sure. Uh, and she's doing it on nearly 45% shooting after tonight, too. So just how dynamic does this shooting that you're getting consistently every night from, from Sab make the offense? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, not surprising, but just she continues to shoot with confidence and, and the ability to, 
you know, make them from all over the place. Some are deep, some are, you know, closer to the, the actual three-point line. Um, <clears throat> but just really reading, reading the other team and uh, making the right play. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Uh, you, you talked pre-game about having a game plan for Copper. Uh, it looks like she had a rough night on both ends of the floor. So how do you kind of make up the performance today? Yeah, look, I think obviously we got her in, she got in foul trouble too, so we limited that. But I thought we defended her well. Like, we have Benajah Laney. She's a handful. She, she takes pride in, in making it hard, and I think uh, we made it hard for Carr and, um, and you know, our help side defence where, where it needed to be. But, you know, Claire, well, she'll respond, I know that, but I'm glad it wasn't against us. So we made it, we made it a tough night for her. Hi, everybody. Um, Sandy, on the night, you guys were able to force Chicago into 17 turnovers and got 27 points off those turnovers. Just when your team is able to get out on the break like that, just how easy do you think it makes offense to go from there? Yeah, we talked about, you know, we tracked deflections and our activity and, and you know, early after All-Star break, I didn't think we were where we needed to. And But, you know, we were able to change a little pattern interrupt about how we want to play with our activity, and that's when we're at our best. Uh, we get some easy ones, we can get out and run. Uh, we got obviously great shooters, um, you know, and it, it makes it it puts the pressure on the other team. So, you know, defensively, I've been really, really happy, especially these last four games. Um, with the the trend that we just got to keep doing what we want to do, and and even though it's not perfect, we're able to adapt and and make changes. But we have, you know, I talk about closed fists, but five players react, and, you know, with each other on a string. Thank you. And for Sabrina and Brianna, another night where the ball was moving around all over the court. Just, I guess, when it comes to sort of like being able to beat defenses, just having the ball move around the way it does, just how, I guess, easy does it make offense from there for you guys? Makes it really easy just because we continue to, um, you know, make it fluid and, and not, not – not stop the ball and continue to, to just keep it moving and, it, and eventually it finds the open person and we're able to just continue to make plays. Um, and that's why we play, you know, we play to, to play with our teammates and, and it's a lot of fun on the court, especially when we're playing at home and, and getting behind the crowd. Hello all, congrats on the win. Uh, Sabrina, my first question is for you. Um, you've been one and to your words, you like to take things personally out there. And this team has recovered real well from, you know, in rematches, coming off of losses and whatnot. And today, you know, you avenged the loss on June 4th when they came back. So what is it about this team that's, uh, in your words, able to take things personally? And how does it benefit and grow that chemistry throughout the rest of the unit? Well, we knew, um, obviously, we we lost one um, against them. and. Um, at home, which was which was big, but for us, obviously, we're just such a different team from that time we played them then, and you know, didn't try to focus too much on that last game just because of how far um, we've grown and we've been able to see that through these um, last couple months. But I think in the back of our minds, we knew that you know we we lost one and uh, played this like a series, and you know, we we got to come in every single game with the intention of being our best and. Um, no matter what their record is or how well or not a team's been playing, it's really the New York Liberty versus the New York Liberty every time we step foot on the floor. And we want to be our best, especially at home with the fans um, just completely engaged in helping us as you know we're leading into the playoffs now. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Brianna, second one for you. Um, in the second half, only 33 points allowed, uh, under 20 in each period. What was the biggest adjustment from the first to second half in terms of, a def in in terms of the defensive standpoint? I think just continuing to lock in, you know, obviously we're, we're playing against a really good team and um, there were some things in the first half that we could have done better, but, but making sure that especially the third quarter um, and really going into the fourth that we made, made a statement and continue to, to kind of pick it up a notch. What do you think that statement was? Mm, that we want to make things hard defensively, uh, excuse me, offensively for the other team and continue to, to push the ball and, and find open people. Uh, Brianna, how important do you think it is to chase home court advantage throughout the playoffs at this point and, you know, kind of chase down Vegas and get that top seed? Um, I think home court advantage is really important. Um, when I think about home court advantage, I think about uh, our series in 2018 versus Phoenix. And we went to game five and we were able to go back home. <laughs> Sorry, but like that's that's what it is. It's like, you know. <laughs> Um, you're comfortable playing in front of your, your home crowd and, and realizing that, you know, little things like that matter. Experience matters. Comfort matters. And 
um, we want it, we want people to to come into Barclays and and have a tough night, and and that's really uh, making sure that we're we're confident in where we play and appreciate the people coming out. And do you think that this, if you, no matter how far you go in the playoffs, how important is to have that advantage? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think home court advantage is um, just really important because this this every single uh, round is a series. And, and that means if you're the top seed, you always have one more home game. Um, and, and that's really it. I don't think we're thinking about that, but I'm sure Sandy and, and the staff are more aware of it than us. Uh, first one for Stewie. Could you just speak a little bit about how kind of your high-low connection with JJ has evolved mm -hmm. over the course of the season and um, how unique it is that it, it goes both ways, whether yep. you're ceiling or she's ceiling? Yeah, I think that, you know, as the ball is going through the middle, it's usually going through JJ or I and uh, continuing to make sure that we, we take a look. You know, we look at one another and know that most times we're able to get position. Uh, the posts switch a lot, so that means JJ then has a four behind her um, and she's able to seal and finish. Thanks. And uh, for Sabrina, a lot of uh, pick and roll usage for you recently, especially the last two games, and you've really broken contain on that big defender hedging up keeping your dribble alive and, and getting by that defender. Has that been a point of focus for you or just something that's been happening naturally? No, just I think understanding the way um, defenses are playing me. And obviously with my shooting ability, I know that bigs are going to have to be at the point of the screen. And so, um, you know, using a shot fake or, or an eye fake to my advantage and then being able to get downhill once I get into the paint, um, it's, it's really, you know, drive and kick, drive and finish and continuing to just play off one another. So, you know, whether it's Sloot or I in the pick and roll, um, you know, we're playing really well off one another and in transition. And um, I think that's um, definitely a strength of this team is just having pass first ball handlers out there that are able to get everyone involved. Hi, Sabrina. Just one for me. Uh, Mabry's a player who plays a lot of nasty. She got off to that really quick start, and you guys were able to limit her after that hot start. What were the changes dealing with Mabry, and what's it kind of like going up against a player with that much fire and tenacity? Yeah, just playing great team defense. Um, you know, I think we're not ever going to stop a player just one on one. I think it's what's behind the ball, and we were able to get a lot of deflections. Um, anytime she drove, you know, we had two on the ball, and we're making her have to make tough decisions. And every time we play really good defense and are on a string, um, it's a tough night for a lot of their best players just because of how long we are and, and how in sync we are defensively. And so it showed in that second half. Obviously, I think at the beginning we had some lapses, but um, we're really growing in the defensive category because we understand we're going to be able to score. But if we can stop people as well, we're going to be a really tough team to beat.